Sid here, and welcome to the Drunken Orc. Now, if you're a regular viewer of some of my content, you might remember not too long ago, I'd done a video where I painted up some flash kits, and I'd done them a bit slap choppy, and then lots of edge highlighting, so they were pretty bright and garish. Now, as you know, one of the models I can run with flash kits is Captain Badrock, and I don't have a Captain Badrock, so I thought... I'll have to get his one, but I wasn't that keen on the bad drunk model. He's okay, I don't dislike the model, I just think he looks like a little block and he's not that big and not that imposing for a big free butter boss, so I thought I'd kid bash one. And this video is looking at how I did that, using a model from that one where you have a little war band. This is a fella from Harrow Deep, so let's have a look at the steps I did to make him into my Captain Badrock Freebooter War Boss standing. As you can see, one of the first things I've done here was chop off the ogre's head. Just gouged it out. I wasn't neat. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't get any pics of the removal of the head. But just gouged it out, shaved off the beard. Bit rough and ready. And then slapped a orc head on. And the orc head was from the Flash Gates. I think it's a Flash Gates captain. I then sculpted a green stuff beard. You might have noticed the beard there. That's the massive green spiky thing under his lip. Uh, the beard was just basically putting green stuff on the model. And then with a very pointy pair of tweezers, just sort of teasing it into shapes. I'm not rolling out each individual hair. I don't think anybody would. But just teasing it away like that. And if you make a mistake and you don't like the look of a particular hair clump, then just, you know, stick it back in and do it again. It's green stuff. You've got a good long while before it uh, becomes unworkable. In fact, it's always best to leave it for, I find, what, about 15 minutes or so after you've mixed it before it becomes the best to work with. Otherwise, it's just a little bit too claggy uh, or sticky, if you don't know what claggy means. Once I was relatively happy with the beard, I just rolled out a couple of little wiggly worms and stuck those to his top lip. And then with the tweezers, just gently sort of curled them round into that kind of weird tash thing. Now this obviously looks quite large on the screen. It's a lot smaller in real life. Under close examination, with zoomed in images, uh, not so much maybe. But this is how we learn with things like green stuff. I also wanted him to have a feather in his hat. So I got that lovely red feather, or feathers, and they were cut from a Blood Bowl player. One of the human Blood Bowl players to get a standard. I'm never going to paint them, and now they're just basically a feather farm for my Freebooter Orcs. So that was uh, just pinned into, his, into the back of his hat. Uh, you can see a little bit of pin from the back, but, you know, maybe that's how he put his feather in his hat, with a pin. That makes sense. Feathers don't grow out of hats. They grow out of chickens bums. We all know that. As you can also see on his left pauldron, there is a beakhead thing. This was the parrot looking thingy majig from the Harrow Deep Black Powder Buccaneers box that I got your man from. He was perched on a big log, so I cut him off the log by his ankles and pinned him to his shoulder. Well, to the, to the orc's shoulder pad. As this left him without feet, or claws, or talons, for birds, talons, um, I green stuffed him some little feet which you can see here you've probably never seen finer green stuff work in your life and this big parrot thing on his shoulder uh, is a squig yes there's many different types of squigs They're not all just mouths on little stumpy legs this particular one is a mimic squig which according to a description from the old oak law has feathers and a beak and hurls insults at passers-by so i thought no we can it's a parrot that'll do there's the body of the parrot, uh, like I say, nice, oh, the, sorry, not the parrot, the mimic squig. Uh, nice big feathery wings and a splayed tail, and he's got little vicious looking claws coming to the end of his wings as well, which I don't believe birds have anymore. Here we have his little treasure chest, you know, this is just a standard bit which comes with the buccaneer model. It goes on his back, and joins up with the straps I'd go and, you know, looked over his shoulder, and it's just a little treasure chest. Now, obviously, I was going to put that on, but I also stuck the three rounds on from the Beast Snagger Thump Gun, fella. These are going to be painted green to represent the radioactive ammunition that Badrook has uh, in his special ability. And here is the Ripper, or at least my take on it. It is an Imperial Heavy Bolter with uh, an Imperial Heavy Bolter 
box magazine on the side. It also has an Orc drum magazine underneath, which was taken from the RTLW Mega Knobs. I've put a chain chopper on the front as a sort of bayonet thing and just a scope on the top. At this stage it's a little bit rough and I've still a few of the mould lines and what have you to remove. And at the back I took one of the little spinning uh, saw blades off a big chopper and stuck that as a extra little bit of violence on the handle. I made the whole ripper gun because the double barreled shotgun that the yoga came with, a low very large and impressive looking was still quite small and weedy for orcs it's funny how it looks good with an ogre but an orc who is generally still a bit smaller than an ogre it's not big enough it's not good enough needs a bigger gun so when i cut the old gun away the left hand was holding well basically the handle of the gun and his finger was on the trigger so i wanted to give him a trigger guard so that's what i did i just got an intricate bit i wasn't going to use otherwise and just carved it a bit into a a rough sort of trigger guard shape and uh, yeah put that in place tiny unnecessary details i used the original base i came with the model i quite liked it it was just sort of a sandy base with uh, the you know bones and a sc big skull on it which had his tactical skull which had his foot up on uh, of course the the burst bag of coins as well now i did cut away a lot of the coins and replaced them with some green stuff teeth because, you know, what's an orc going to do with gold? Rubbish metal. Can't even make a decent chopper out of it. Use teeth. Now at this point, it just looks like lots of little green triangles. But that's what teeth are, so shut up. And there is his boss banner. Couple of cocktail sticks. Stuck together like a ship's mast. Lashed up the join with some green stuff rope. And a couple of chains hanging down as well with various totems and glyphs on. I tried to keep it as close to the original Bad Rook banner as I could. Not an identical copy, but at least a similar sort of theme. The skulls were just from the skull kit, funnily enough. It's amazing that, isn't it? How, how, how strange to use skulls from that kit. Uh, and I just drilled holes through the sides and thread the chain through them. Uh, the glyph plates on there were just glyph plates that I had. The hands, to be fair, there's only a couple. And I also stuck a severed human head in it, because why wouldn't you? Uh, the big fist glyph, I didn't have any of those knocking about, so obviously I just made that one from plastic card, as you can see. Which, to be fair, I think they look pretty good, and they're very, very easy to do. And here we'll have him from the front, with all his bits and bobs in place. The Mimic Squig has his body, the boss pole's in place. I'll show you how I put it in place in a moment, when we'll have a look at the back of the model. In fact, let's do that now. There we go. So you can see it's just a little bit of plastic tubing uh, glued onto the back. A couple of rivets put on just to show where it actually, uh, or how it actually attaches. And then the boss pole is actually removable. It just sits in there nice and snug. And it doesn't really move around because it's wedged in against the Mimic Squig, which is nice. So it doesn't move around at all. And as you can see, the little treasure chest sits in there snugly with that uh, little bandolier of radioactive ammunition alongside it i could have changed the chopper incidentally but let's face it as far as choppers go that's a pretty orky chopper so i thought no nah, we'll leave that exactly as it is and there you can see the mimic squig complete on his shoulder and the ripper held one-handed as well you know what a monster so i primed all the parts black once they were primed black, I then dry brushed them with a medium grey, literally medium grey from Vallejo. I then dry brushed them again, concentrating a little bit more on the upper parts with a lighter grey, stonewall grey, again from Vallejo, and then finished them off just with a straight up white, just on the very uppermost parts of the model. And then a little bit elsewhere, just where I got a bit. That needs to be lighter. You can see I also started putting a bit of blue on here. Uh, you can just make out there the collar and cuff. So here I've put a few more colours down. Started adding some reds to the feathers and some of the dags. Done some browns on his uh, pants and boots. And the first shade of skin went down as well. That was a watered down brown contrast paint. Something along the lines of, I believe it was pallid bone or any of the you know skeleton hoard that sort of ilk that sort of color water it down about 50 50 plop it on the skin areas and then i'll go over it with mantis warriors green 
it just gives us more sort of brown tinge to your green i will later put some beel tan on that just to to pick it back up towards a more vivid green sort of color the browns again contrast browns and then highlighted it with the kind of a glaze just watered down some brown colors of a you know a slightly lighter shade to the contrast i'd used and then just picked out the higher points building it up as you can see the coat is blue and orange in a tribute to cadbury's fudge or possibly nerf the orange was army speed painter fire dragon orange and the blue was i believe it's enchanted blue in the same range then highlighted them up again like the browns with a thin down glaze made from temple guard blue and troll slayer orange now go a bit more color on the front see the the boots have been highlighted fully now just with skeleton bone and then a little bit of a uh, wraith bone although it wasn't wraith bone it was a vallejo equivalent i can't remember what it was called though but a wraith bone style paint just to bring up the highlights also done a little ribbons coming off his hat and stuck some yellow on his breastplate Picked out some details on the back with the feathers, as well as doing the uh, the strap going over his shoulder there, and some more highlighting on the front, mostly on the yellow on the breastplate, and a little dag coming off his hat. For the base, I picked out the ground with dark wood, speed paint from Army Painter, and picked out all the bones and skull and teeth, etc., with bone white from Vallejo. As my bone white's running a little bit low and I haven't been able to get my hands on any new stuff, I have also been swapping out that out for Elfic Flesh, or Elfy Elf I thought it was called, but now I look at the bottle, I see that it's not, and I've been making up words again. The next step for the base was to hit up all the bones and teeth and what have you had done with bone white with Skeleton Horde. Once that was dry, I give the whole base, skulls, teeth, bones, ground, rocks, the lot, a dry brush with bone white again and then went over it finally with a, an off white just to just to pick out the highlights on the on the bleached bone and the, the earth and that's how i do my bases anyway so that worked great once that was done and that sack there was suitably highlighted with all the additional dry brushing i just stuck a camo green army paint wash on it and that's all i've done with that it's a lovely green i don't use it much i think it's best suited for commandos and stuff like that but it just yeah, it's a sack on the ground but i think it looks great now we go, done the wrap on the sword hilt, uh, also picked out the orc's eyes and teeth, the ones in his mouth, not in his bag. So I picked out the metallics at this point, again it was just his belly plate and the chainmail on his left arm, he's also got some on his boots and his bionic eye. I forgot to mention before, the bionic eye was just sliced off another model and just glued onto his face, because Badrook's got a bionic eye. You know, it's 40,000, he wouldn't just have a patch would he? And once I'd put the metallic on, which was like a gun metal, I hit it with a black wash. Not known oil, because new known oil, since it's been coming in 18 milliliter pots, is rubbish. It's so, so weak. I've said this before, and you know what? I'm going to say it again. It's just, it's like Nana's pop. It's like if you ever gone to your granny's and she makes you a glass of Kiora or something, she'd barely wet the bottom of the glass and then stick a pint of water in it and go, there you go, and you go oh, that's still the vitamins. Horrible, weak stuff. But that's new known oil, so I just bought some of the Vallejo black wash, which is dark. Uh, it's too dark, if anything, and just stuck it in a couple of spare bottles, put a bunch of liquid in to water it down, liquid being water, and there you go, I've got my own nullnish oil. Anyway, and then I highlighted some of the metals back up again with a little bit of silver. For the chopper, I put a black wash over the dry brushed zenitholness just to make it a bit darker and then just picked out the actual blade of it in metallics like I'd done before. Done the dags a nice red, stuck some gold on it, he is flashy after all, done the tooth on the bottom and then painstakingly painted little tiny checks, two rows of, going down the back of the blade. Painted up the sack on his back it's a treasure chest, so it was going to be brown and gold. I mean, that's what colour treasure chests are. Look it up. And the bag itself, I painted exactly the same way as I did the turnover bits of his boots. Almost a bony colour, but with a red patch. The glowy ammo, I just sort of stippled different colour greens on it to make it as bright as I could. I need to really look into this object source light and things. I think that would be pretty cool. In fact, it looks amazing when it's done right, but it's terrifying to me. I think I need to bite the bullet and give it a shot soon. I painted up the ripper in pretty much the same way as I painted the guns for the flash kits. I just picking out different panels on the gun in different colours and then highlighting them as bright as I could. 
it will just help tie him into the squad a bit more. And there's the other side of the ripper, although at this point I haven't fully finished it. As you can see, the lens hasn't been painted and I've still got to do the skull and a few of the other little bits and bobs on it. And the boss pole done pretty much exactly the same as the ripper and the rest of the flash git squad again, just to help tie him into that squad. One of the biggest problems I had with this model was because it was a kit bash model and when I put a lot more effort into it was just putting the kit together, I wanted to try and make it a bit special, put a bit more effort into the paint job. However, I knew he was going to be going along with that squad of five flash kits, which is going to become a squad of ten flash kits, and they're all going to be painted the same way as in the way the first five are painted, and if he was painting a totally different style and stuck in with them, it would look weird if you follow. I don't mind the whole army having slightly different styles mixed in. That doesn't bother us, but units should be units, as far as I'm concerned. That, that's how it works in my head. So he had to blend in with that unit of flash kits, and yet I still want to give a little bit of effort and, you know, blending and glazing and what have you, and try and make it just a bit more special. So this is how I've tried to go about achieving that. Here we have the Mimic Squig body. Again, just contrast paints with electric blue, some sort of purple, <laughs> and then a yellow. I think it was Imperial Fist's yellow, as it happens. Um, once, obviously, I put that on, I then went over with the Temple Guard blue, which is a much brighter layer paint, I think from GW. I went over and just highlighted all the, the blue feathers and done likewise with, a, I think it was Magos purple, and then Ariel yellow on that. And it gives off to me some very heavy Skeletor vibes. <laughs> There's the rest of the Mimic Squig. Again, body blue, because, you know, its body's blue. And I painted his head purple. And then they're just, the, the talons and the beak were just done the same way as I do normally do bone. He also picked out his shoulder pad in black at the front and then that sort of brass at the back. And that was it. That's the whole model painted. Everything done and dusted. All that was left to do was to stick them together and whack them down with these five flash gits, awaiting the next five. And oh, God knows when they're going to turn up. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was uh, detailed enough, yet not too detailed to be fucking boring. And if you're still listening, I'll give you a few pics of the finished model just to see you out. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.